Welcome everyone to another Wargamer Online video, and today we're going to be looking at the Orc Codex. <laughs> Welcome everyone to this video about the Orc Codex review. Um, as always, thank you to Games Workshop for sending it to us in advance, giving us the opportunity for this. Um, There's a lot to cover today, so we're going to do a quick bit of a sort of intro about the sort of the law and Orc culture for anyone who may not be overly familiar with this. <laughs> 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 exactly. It's definitely a unique culture. Fight, eat, teeth. There we go. Oh, that's the Summed things. it up. <laughs> Crash dash dog. We're, we're then going to go on to have a bit of a look at the different sections of the book itself. So you've got the different clans themselves. Um, we've got a bit of a lore update to say sort of what's gone on recently with the Great Rift. Um, we then get on to more of the units, what's been added to the book, what we've sadly lost. Um, we can then talk things about points, different entries and different stratagems, uh, hopefully cover all this orky goodness. Mm. So Jack, what do you what do you as a, a newbie oh, to the no, orcs? Like. <laughs> what do you know about what do you know um, about orc society? They're big, they're green. I remember them being like mushrooms or something, aren't they? They're, yeah. like, they're like spore planets or something. Yeah, they they are fungus people. Yeah, they're like just big angry green mushrooms that just hit you. So in terms of the hierarchy, right at the bottom, you've got squigs. Oh, okay, yeah. They, they look like footballs with mouths and lots and lots <laughs> I think of teeth. they are footballs with mouths, to be honest. <laughs> yep, they, they, they eat orcs, uh, and orcs eat them in turn, so it's a great cycle of life. Um, and just above them, or, or pretty much at the same level, <laughs> you've got snotlings, <laughs> which are the, the tiniest of the orcs. The tiniest. Are they yeah. smaller than Gretchen's? They're smaller than Gretchen. Right, okay. They're more snivelling than Gretchen. <laughs> but uh, what they do is they, they herd the squigs. Oh, and right, okay. they sort of, they're the farmers, as you would, and they make things like fungus spear for the orcs. <laughs> Then, then you've got the Gretchen. Ah, that love, there we go. Yeah. Little grunts. They love to bully all the snotlings, <laughs> and uh, they get by on their wiles and their cunning. And above them, you've got the orcs themselves, which are the big brutes oh, that we yeah, know and love. The big, green, angry yep. things. And with orcs, the bigger you are, the more stronger there you are, are yeah. the better you are, the more in charge you are. Because another thing, they never die, do they? Orcs, they just keep growing. Yeah, just keep on growing. And every orc from the lowest squig up to the biggest war boss comes from a tiny little spore. So it's a very yeah. uh, It's quite a like it's quite a nice cycle they've got yeah. going off, haven't they? They're yeah. like all, all And anyone good. can be anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's you know, it's you a meritocracy. To... Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I think they're more sophisticated than people give them, to be honest. I think they've got yeah. quite a good society. It's very simple. Yeah. Very simple. So that's all covered in the book here. We've got these first few pictures here that sort of cover off all the different types. Oh, shock attack, I can always remember them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Or all culture. <laughs> that's it. Just, just summed up in the shock attack gun. Yeah. It's built around chaos, unpredictability, and always yep. fighting. Firing I mean, a snotling through the yep. warp and then reappearing inside Terminator armor where it will then just <laughs> claw its way through the space marine inside. Exactly. Oh, yeah, you it you just can see their up, station. It? Yeah, yeah. They're used as food and they're used as ammo. And then you've got a little bit here about the two orc gods, mm. Gork and Mork. One who's brutally cunning, and the other one is cunningly, cunningly brutal. brutal. Yeah. Or cunning but brutal. <laughs> I'm trying to work out that, yeah. <laughs> and even the orcs confuse which one's which. <laughs> which like, they don't even know like, their own gods. No, and they pretty much want the same thing, just war. Just war. Cool. The, the next thing the book goes on to cover is about the different tribes, the different clans. You can think yeah. a little bit about the different sort of chapters of Space Marines. Mm. Um, you've got the sort of perhaps the, the largest or Gazgol's own one is the Goth clan. They like fighting. And just to give you a couple of other examples, you've got things like the Evil Sons, which are... They're red. They're red. The red things go, they go faster. Fast. They go faster. That's an orc belief. Yeah, faster ones. And uh, they... they where all things like the Speed Freaks come yeah. from, another one of Games Workshop's more recent releases. If we go a little bit further into the book, we see this nice little map that Games Workshop's given us that just sort of covers out what uh, what areas are covered by orcs. Here's, Seems like quite a lot. <laughs> spoiler, it's all of them. <laughs> orcs are everywhere. Like, like fungus, they're impossible to get rid of, and they're getting everywhere. 
<laughs> Isn't that like the thing though? People say like the only thing that hasn't stopped orcs just stomping across the entire universe is the fact that they don't get on with each other. That they just fight it. each other all the time, so they just that's can't it. get on. If they run it. out, if they run out of enemies to fight, they, they just, just fight each other. Yeah, exactly. And to go along with that nice new map, they've given us a bit of a, a timeline. Some yeah. of it you'll be familiar with, all things like the, the famous... Yep, the Beast Arises beast back arises, just yeah. after the Horse Heresy or yeah. just before, rather. Um, then you've got all of the different parts like Armageddon's very famous battles, and it covers all of those, and Rin's world with the Crimson Fists. Um, and then it brings us on actually more to the part where we've got up to present day so we've got with the great rift so yeah. pretty bit important bit of lore here is uh Gazgol's fighting an armageddon and suddenly gork and mork start shouting at him telling him he's not <laughs> doing what he's supposed to be doing and he realizes that the universe is bigger than this one little planet <laughs> so he pulls his ship out and he and he and he decides he's going to go off and, and make a whole universe spanning war um, the Imperium is chase this, after him. Yeah, is this his great clan, this yeah, idea? Yeah. This idea, he can unify them all. Oh, bless him. You can just imagine him sat on his ship above Armageddon, like, scratching his head, going, well, it's actually quite a small planet, that, isn't it? <laughs> oh, boys, let's go do something else now! <laughs> let's go crop the rest of them. <laughs> so, they, they run away, the Imperium gives chase, but just before the Imperium can finish them off, the, the whole ship disappears into this big explosion of green warp energy, Gork and Mork decides it's not time for Gasgol to die. Nope. And uh, basically that starts off its own little warp storm, but it's, this one's bright green. It matches up with the other ones from Cadia and across the system. And uh, this is why the, the Greenskins actually believe that the Cicatrix Maledict and the Great Rift is uh, Gork's Moor. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so part of that... At least they got something to believe in, haven't they? Rather <laughs> That's than it. just fighting. Now we've got all oh, our big green things. That big green thing. <laughs> but now Gazgol has gone off to find the Octaria system. He's got uh, another war under his belt after smacking up another war boss and taking his. <laughs> and uh, he's now heading towards the Octaria system, is where the orcs are fighting the Tyranids. Oh. And no one's heard from that. <laughs> and, and if you think the Tyranids get stronger the more things they eat, yeah. and the Orcs get stronger the longer the they fight, they fight so. I think we could see some pretty strong Orcs come yeah. out of that sector of space. <laughs> so Gazgol's gone there to show the Overfiend what a real Overfiend is. <laughs> So I'd, I'd love I'd love to get a new Gazgol model. You can just imagine him walking yeah. over to that war boss, just backhanding him and going, no, my lads now, let's go. That's it. That's pretty much what he did to this <laughs> That's one. all he does, isn't it? Just yeah. Gazgol, just goes that, and backhands people. <laughs> it, it's a simple, no meetings, no board meetings. The, the next section of the book covers a bit of all the background about the different units. We won't cover them now, but just suffice to say, there's a nice little bit for art of them. And it sort of gives you a bit of a, a background so you understand how all the different units fit together um, and generally sort of what their role on the battlefield would be. Nice little section in the middle gives you all of the standard pictures and paint guides and things like that, including I wanted to sort of show this picture. We've, we've all seen them now from the community page, yeah. but these are the, some of the new vehicles they brought out. And I think everyone can agree <coughs> that these are absolutely oh, gorgeous sculpts. Yeah. Oh, very nice. And they kind of gone with this Mad Max aesthetic. Yeah. Which, which really suits always them. fits orcs, doesn't really it? Really yeah, suits just the orcs. Get something and stick it all together. Exactly. Okay. Now we get to the part which I imagine a lot of people have turned up for, which is the rules themselves. So before we get into all of the different abilities, um, I just wanted to cover a little bit about what's been taken out of the book and perhaps what's gone into it. So, in terms of entries that we have lost, unfortunately, we've got, and it's perhaps what you'd expect, it's all of the models which Games Workshop doesn't actually currently produce. Mm. Um, you've got Warboss in Mega Armor and the Warboss on the Warbike, two units that they didn't make. Um, you've also got the Big Mech on a Warbike and a Big Mech without a shock attack gun, because I guess there's no model for that. No, no. But that, that's a little bit of a shame, maybe, but... In the way game back for that phase cues, we've got the new Death Killer War Trike, which looks to be an amazing unit. And <laughs> luckily for me, I didn't build a, a war boss and war bike. I actually built a war boss and a war trike. <laughs> so <laughs> I've go. got my unit already sorted. Um, in terms of other units, in for elites, you've lost the Pain Boy and War Bike mm -hmm. to be expected. Um, fast attack, fast attack, 
the war tracks, the scorchers, and the war buggies. Yeah, which have all been replaced exactly. by the new cars, as it exactly. was kind of like the reimagining of all of them. And those sculpts, they they were very they old. Were, they, they didn't they didn't exactly old, look yeah. like the the latest range of orgs. Yep. And the new ones look amazing. Oh, so good. So the the new ones now, and I've got them here. Is the the Boom Dacker Snaz Wagon, the Don't Shock Jump Dragster, Dragster, the Mega Track uh, Scrap Jets. And the rocker truck squig buggies, <laughs> which is the one that fires squigs. That's my personal favourite. Yeah, yeah. um, in terms of heavy support, what we've lost is the big guns. Yeah, those. which were replaced by the mech, mech guns. guns, where they the bubble exactly. chucker, the lift dropper one. Yep. I forgot what it's called now. No, it, it, those, those are the ones, ones yeah, exactly. Yeah, the bigger artillery piece rather than yeah, the little. The small old things, ones yeah. that used to be made of metal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in terms of what we've gained around that area is we've got actually two new... There's still the Battle Wagon kit, mm. but they've now created three profiles. You've got the Sander Battle Wagon, yep. and you've got a Bone Breaker, which is all about that death that roller. death roller on the front, yeah. And you've got the Gun Wagon, which, which is, is all about sacrificing transport capacity. Yeah, you're seeing this a lot now, aren't you, from yep. the old spec where that used to be one thing and you can modify it however you want whereas now it's yep. like different ones so with the carn effects and the tyrannids that comes to mind you have carn effects and you have like thorn back carn effects and, and you have the killers. screamer killer carn effects yep. which was all originally just the carn effect but with different upgrades now they've done separate data yep. sheets for them now Unless it, I guess it gives them the ability to give them additional rules. Yeah, additional without rules. Without having to make that, it pointed yeah, so high. Like, if you take a death roller, you have to, like, blah de blah de blah. Now it's just, this thing has a death roller with this rule. It also helps with the rule of three. But not that yes, if you ever yeah. end up with nine battle wagons, you've got <laughs> You're doing game. something right, I think. <laughs> And, and the, of course, the new piece of terrain we've I got, which this. is the, the Mech's Workshop. Jack, Jack's a big fan of I love of this it, one. I love it. I just love the idea of Mech just putting up his workshop during a battle. And in just, the middle of the battle. Just, just like, like a little car, just put up, like, oh, Mech, I'm blowing a tire off. He goes, all right, and just fixes it, and then off he goes again into battle. It's a, it's a pit stop in your mind, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it? it's just like a little pit stop, like a war a war buggy just, like, loses a tire and just comes in, like, boss, something's happening. He's like, oh, okay. He just calls him with the flag. Down. Yeah, just like a little flag. Mech comes running over with it on his back <laughs> so that that's all of the unit entries let's have a look at the the rules now so we've got some generic rules we've got clans which as we said was sort of similar to chapters for space marines yeah. and when we go to the end we'll sort of discuss what those different clans do um we've got the same ability that we had out of the index called here we go but they've yeah. improved it it, what it used to let you do is re-roll charges, and this is pretty much any orc infantry yeah. model I think has this. Orcs, yeah. um, and but instead now you can re-roll one or all of the dice. Yes, which is very good when you get a six yeah. and a one, so you yeah. can re-roll that one instead of rolling the six, and it's just exactly. And I like that they've said any of the dice because there are some um, stratagems that let you actually have additional dice. For things like some of the, the new war buggies <laughs> and stuff like that. And whilst I said it was any infantry model, it's pretty much any orc model yeah, has this. Yeah. Um, mob rule is the same as it is in the index. And what this means is that the morale, the leadership of the unit, is equal to the number of models in the unit or the number of models in another friendly unit within six inches. <laughs> so if you've got a couple of those 30, 30 man boy units, they're not going they're anywhere. Not, they're not leaving, though. No. Exactly. And then it's my favourite. I mean, just the attention that they've put into the titles of all these special... Yeah. Not even the special rules, just the titles of them. Yeah. It's just great. Um, a new ability we've got is Daka Daka Daka. <laughs> now, this was really important for Orcs because with the invent of 8th and there was the minus one to hit modifiers. Yeah. Because Orcs only normally hit on a 5 up. Mm became to the point where some units orcs couldn't even shoot no. because they just they were always missing yeah now an unmodified hit roll of a six will always hit with that weapon yep and when you do this you can actually roll another dice and generate a possibly another attack yeah so if you roll get a six you can roll another dice and hope for another five or a six i mean that's the thing you could have like a fully functioning orc yep. looter and then you could have an orc boy with a shoot that's had his eyes gouged out with a <laughs> melon baller and they've probably got the same chance of hitting <laughs> haven't they i mean like that's it that's I mean, it they're just they, they even say here, nothing aids accuracy like firing so many shots that you just can't miss. <laughs> There's just statistically impossible for you to miss. So exactly. You just throw all your ammo at them. 
But important to note on this one that the extra attacks can't themselves generate extra attacks, yeah. which is something we've seen through all of the books, and it, yeah. it stops it getting silly. Yeah, that one slugger boy just getting a thousand shots because exactly. for some reason you can't not roll a six. Exactly. And the last thing in here is just the fact that if you've got a speed mob, which is a collection of some of the new buggies and things, um, when you set it up, you just set them all up within six inches of each yeah, other, and then, then they can go with their which own. Which is like tank formations with the Imperial yeah. Guard, well, with any armies now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, exactly. And I guess what that stops is let you bring a mob of them together in a choice, rather than it taking up all of yeah. your choices on these really because orc vehicles are cheap. Everything orc is cheap yeah. because. Whilst <laughs> everything all just dies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it does a lot of damage, it's very aggressive, and they're great fun, but they will die in droves. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not hard to kill, is it? I mean, no. if you think Eldar are squishy, wait until you uh, shoot an orc unit. <laughs> Six up saves don't go far, even no. in 8th edition. Well, especially with the rend happening now. <laughs> exactly. So, we go now a bit into Japan, the different the uh, unit profiles. And actually, from what I've seen, although I've not had a great amount of time looking through this, there's not been a huge amount of changes that I've seen to any yeah. of the, the, sort of the profiles or the rules, yeah. as opposed to those new generic rules. I mean, rules. there's a big running thing, isn't it, within the York I mean, You kind of expect this on all data sleet sheets. They're, they don't have a good save. No. They have a lot of attacks. They don't shoot well, but they hit well in combat. And that's, yes. that's pretty much it, isn't it? Most things are oriented towards combat apart from you know your looters and your burners and everything yep. which are your weird shooting orcs but those exactly. things are just millions of attacks millions of bodies but yep. they're gonna die that's kind of orcs isn't it in general exactly thing things to know about hqs um any war boss including gazgo and some of the named ones give them the war ability which means that they can charge even if they advanced which is just even which better, is crazy it? that's orc infantry that's units. just orcs just running forward and not stopping Exactly. Um, also, Gazgol, which is quite nice, gives them the ability to get plus one attack to any models within six inches of him. And I can see why they did that to models and not units, because otherwise that really could get crazy. Yeah. Um, so the additional attack is very nice on that. Um, the other thing that they've got is there's quite a lot of morale sort of... Uh, I guess mechanics to stop you from running yeah, away. Yeah, with orcs there. in such large numbers and very, very low leaderships, it's yeah. going to be useful for that. I mean, when you're taking 15 boys off in a unit from one combat round, it's just yeah, you're you, need you are going to high morale, aren't you? Exactly. So the, what the war bosses can usually do is inflict uh, a D3 mortal wounds in order to make sure that then you've basically all passed that test. Yeah, which, which is like... Sounds, the, it sounds bad, but the they're old, only three boys. It's the old mob rule, isn't it? That's what yeah. you used to have, isn't it? If you had a knob in the unit and your orcs start running, the knob would just crush an orc's head and they so. all go, oh, maybe not then, start running <laughs> back in, isn't it? <laughs> but I think every orc player remembers the, even before that, which is basically if you had more than 11 orcs, you were fearless. Oh, yeah. That, which that was, was the best one. That was but, it, yeah. But this this new one is very good as well. There's very rarely, I think. It makes to... sense as well, doesn't it? Yeah. The orcs charging, they do some fighting, a load of their friends die. They go to turn around, and the war bosses are like, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're not. I'm, <laughs> scared, I'm more scared of <laughs> it. The boys are just like, yeah, I'm scared of that war boss. Let's go back in there. Jack's just noticed something here, so let's cover it off while while we're having a look. The the big mech with the shock attack gun, yeah, that's, that's, attack, that's attack, the one attack. that sucks up snotlings and fires them. <laughs> Through the warp. Yep. So this is one of the guns. It has 2d6 shots. And it has daka daka daka. So every unmodified six you roll, you're going to get to get another shot with it. No, it's d6 shots. Oh, sorry, d6. Strength I'm two d6. Misrolling. Strength minus five it. rend. D6 damage. Exactly. That's just crazy. And if you roll an eleven or more for the strength of the weapon, then each successful hit does d3 mortal wounds. <laughs> yeah, which is no vortex like we've seen before. But you know, it doesn't. It's not but too bad, is he's it? He's not going to hit too many of those no, shots. No. But, but even if <laughs> two hit, it. you're doing two d3 yeah. mortal wounds. That's pretty nasty. So that's a nice one. Um, the mechs, a lot like tech marines, can also repair yeah, your repair vehicles, units, yeah. which is a nice ability. We get to one of the new units in here. I just want to cover those quickly. So you've got the Death Killer War Trike. So yep. this is effectively this is the only one you've got which is HQ. Mm -hmm. This is your war boss on war bike, war bike replacement. Yes. So again, he's gonna have this one here though, difference being he's got a speed war, which means that he's uh he does the same thing as a normal war boss would do for infantry, but he does it to bikers and vehicles, so they get to yeah. re-roll, they get to charge even if they've advanced. Oh yeah, you can imagine that just war bikes going That's from crazy. point A to point B and then charging instantly. Absolutely crazy. 
Uh, and aside from that, he's got a really nice um, weapons. He's, of course, got this uh, killer jets that come out of his bike, basically fire. Um, it can either fire a bit like a flamer or more like a heavy flamer. Mm. But it can also, if you're within um, eight inches of it, you've got this ability for to be used as a cutter, which is yep. a bit like a multi-melter. So if you're within half range of that, if you're within four inches, yeah. then you're going to get to roll two dice for inflicting damage. And it does D6 damage at minus four AP and strength so eight. He's, he's a bit of an all-purpose tool. Though, yeah, he, can, he yeah. can go at vehicles. He can go at any sort of like characters and things like yeah. that. It's pretty nice. Um, He's got. It's not got a power claw, but he's got something quite close for a war boss because he's already strength five. So adding two to his strength is pretty good. Mm. But I guess it means he's not quite as good against some of the vehicles. Yeah. Um, into fast attack now, and we'll just have a look again at some of those new units. So you've got all of the new uh, buggies that are coming with the speed freaks and mm. the new releases at the <coughs> moment. Yeah. The these all look great. They're all around sort of five or six. Uh, power level oh, so, okay, yeah. so you're talking probably about 100 120 points we can have a look at yeah. that later but none of it looks particularly expensive you're all talking about sort of toughness six wounds eight or nine that sort of size yeah which makes sense they're not they're not the toughest old things are they no they but they're, down, they're pretty fast they're pretty you're looking 12 fast, to 14 yeah. inches sort of speed um, and some of them have got some really nice abilities in here i i really like the custom booster blaster here for the mm. fact that if it finishes a charge with an enemy unit, roll a d6, and on a four up, it does d3 mortal wounds. Yeah, that's this big spiked ram on the yeah. front. Yeah, and it? Yeah. if you combine that with another ability, which is a stratagem, we'll have a look at later. But basically, that says that you can choose a vehicle; it can charge three d6, and if it successfully charges, roll a dice, and on a two up, it does d3 mortal wounds. <laughs> so, so that's just plowing through yeah this, I, I now want to see a game where i want to get about four of these and just take turns ramming gilliman yeah. with them yeah just to see how many of these it takes <laughs> to just beat him to death with more wounds i mean my favorite is the shock jump dra dragster isn't it yeah you like the one, one with the shock attack engine in the back which on a four up teleports nine inches away from an enemy yeah, when you advance which it's just it's just great you can just imagine it can't you? just the york driving like oh he presses his big booster button and just disappears reappears somewhere else disappears again and then comes back and he's just That's like it. screaming as he's going so you can have them disappearing and literally disappearing anywhere oh, yeah, else you gotta the think they probably don't have gala fields do they when they're doing no. that <laughs> they're just like going through raw warp and coming out again exactly and and they've got some nice abilities on there you like even the shock jump dragster which doesn't have a large number of shots it's got then a grok gunner and targeting swig so you're adding two to its hits rolls when the shooting yeah. phase so then you basically got well what's a good plasma gun just deep striking in around yeah. the board shooting at wherever you want hitting on a yeah a, well a three up for an orc that's that's pretty that's damn. pretty good that's a good orc that is a good orc well, I guess if you advance, you're going to take one off of that, but still, that's a good orc. Okay, and the last unit entry we'll cover in this review here is the Mech Boy Workshop. My new fave. Co covering the nice new bear kit. It's a gorgeous model. You can sort of see it down here on the left. Little grots working around, like an engine on chains as well, it. isn't it? That he's just ready to plop back in there for someone. I'm sure we're going to see some armies on parade boards with oh, these on. Yeah, just Definitely. a big workshop of mechs just exactly. everywhere, yeah. In, in terms of rules, it's a structure that you set up like a terrain piece. Yeah. So it can't be targeted, it can't be destroyed or anything like mm. that. So you do have to pay to bring it. Um, I think it's 80 points as power so level four. Bad. We'll check that again at the end. But um, in terms of what it can do, if you've got a friendly orc infantry unit within one inches in the fight phase, then you can um, roll a dice and on a four up, you can do D3 mortal wounds to an enemy unit. That's I mean, bad. That does mean the, the enemy unit has to come to you on, yes. on that terrain yeah, feature, yeah. which they might be a bit wise to. Yeah. But what I liked about that was it orc infantry. So unless you're playing, your enemy is also playing orcs, they can't pull that shenanigans against you. Yes. Yeah. Which is quite good. Um, the other thing that this thing can then do is what's called custom jobs. So, <laughs> and you love this, don't you? I love this. I love this. Just this idea of the mech just setting up his workshop during a battle, and cars just coming in, getting some repairs, going off again, and the mech's just there, like, yeah, I've done good, done good. And you roll a dice, and if you get a six for any of these, oh, then you get an extra little mech's, special. Mech's thing done something for the rest special, of the game. hasn't he? He has. <laughs> so, the one that I like is more speed. 
which basically until the end of your next movement phase increases the move characteristic of that vehicle by six inches. So, because the way that I like to do this is that this happens at the end of the movement phase. So if you set these terrain features, possibly multiple of them, up halfway up the board, move your battle yeah. wagons up. Yeah. At the end of your movement phase, you give them this ability. So next turn, they move their normal movement plus, plus six, six inches. Yeah. And on a six, you're adding one to the charge rolls for the rest of the special. battle. Yeah, maybe the mech, mech liked that battle wagon, didn't he? So he's got an extra piston in there somewhere. Some better fuel. <laughs> better fuel, that's it. Some like, quality fuel. The other thing you can do in here is you can do more rivets, which is basically about sort of fixing it up. And if there's a mech or a big mech there, then rather than getting D3, you can just get a, sh a flat up flat three. three. Which is good. That's three wounds back on your vehicle. Yeah, is which is pretty big. And then additionally, if you get that six on the D6, then you get to add one to your toughness for the rest of the game. Extra special. <laughs> which again, on a vehicle, an extra <laughs> toughness is pretty big. Um, and then the final one, which is... It's good, but it's probably my least favourite on this one, is more Dakar. Which basically means that you get to do the max number of shots if you've got a variable number. Yeah. So I guess the, the reason why I'm not a fan of that one as much is that in order to get this upgrade, you need to give up your shooting yeah, phase. Yeah, because to do a custom job, you can't shoot or charge or attack, no. can you? In well, that your attacks just go down to one. So that's if someone it, charges yeah. you, you still get one attack back, but that's not an awful no, lot. No. no. So you're a bit vulnerable when yeah. you're actually doing this. But I guess what it does mean is that if you got there and no one else was in range, yeah. then you could do that knowing that next turn you'd at least get the max number of shots yeah. out of it. And if you do something like, I don't think I've seen anywhere here that says you can't do it on a stomper, then it's Psycho Daka Blast <laughs> might, might do a lot of shots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That could be quite fun. Doing it on and, a stomper isn't bad, isn't it? And if you roll a six, on that uh, to get something special, then you actually increase the weapon's damage by one. <laughs> Again, I'm sure I'm probably wrong, but if you can do this on a stomper, that actually changes from my least favourite ability to my most favourite ability. <laughs> just that blast and just go and just everywhere. That's just, it. Just scything down. Yeah, everything. Down everything. Especially if you've got the plus one damage on it. Oh, it's going to be good. Your opponent will cry. <laughs> they will cry. So we now get to the bit of the book which covers what sort of the individual clan rules are but also what the sort of what you get for being battle forged which i guess won't come as much of a surprise for some of it but that they've all got very dorky <laughs> names this is expect. ours dog off that rule it's is the perfect, one that's it? the rule where basically it means that your your troops get objective yeah. secured which you'd expect yeah um, you've then got clan cultures, which so if your bat if your army's battle forged, then basically your detachments can be assigned a clan keyword and get yeah. the resulting benefits from this. It does mean if you want to bring something like Gazgol, you have I believe to you have Goths, to take yeah. then he a Goth detachment. Off, yeah. But let's be it's fair, you could you could also take him and then like three units of Gretchen. Yeah, <laughs> and that's it. And that's, that's it, because his ability works yeah. on all orcs, not just on other goths, which is nice, representing he's that, that overlord. Yeah, that unbound, kind of like unified orc army, isn't it? Exactly. The other ones that we've got in here is there's one called Guns for Hire, and so basically what this gets, does, yeah, it? it's a flash git special rule. And what it means there is that you can include flash gits in other units, in other detachments of but other they different don't cultures. Get the cultures do exactly. They, yeah. Flash gits are notoriously known as being mercenaries. Yeah, they they're kind of pirates, aren't they? Yeah, they instead pirate. of gold, they do it for teeth. Yep, they're very cool. Those That's guys. orc currency. <laughs> so it just means you can include those in there without having lost your ability. However, if you do put them in a freebooters army. Because nice, one of the clans is freebooters. Freebooters. Then that's the pirate equivalent of a clan. <laughs> and uh, they then get the freebooters clan ability, yeah. which is nice. Um, and finally, it's just saying that Gretchen basically don't get clan culture. They're, they're beneath culture. <laughs> they're, they are uncultured. Little they're the underculture. <laughs> exactly. So let's have a look at those cultures themselves. I won't go through each of them here, but just, just know that basically they're very fluffy. And they're very, very good. Um, goths no get the equivalent. About. They get the equivalent of Daka Daka Daka, but for the fight phase. So if you roll an under modified roll of a six for a hit, you get to do an extra roll. That's that's pretty nice. Um, as opposed to them, the bad moons are all about the shooting phase. So you can re-roll hits of one, 
and of course that's not bad no and that's going to trigger that's off more daka 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 30 shooter boys just running yeah. in and re-rolling ones that's a lot of ones yeah. you get to re-roll and the one that I like although I'm, I'm a bit biased I love my free booters free booters they get to add one to hit rolls for attacks made if another friendly unit within 24 inches has destroyed an enemy unit this phase it's not so, bad. so pick your battles. Yeah. If you can, if you see one battle where you think I can definitely wipe that unit out, do that one first. Do that one first, and all your other units within twenty four inches are then gonna that's not bad. add one yeah, to hit rolls. That's quite good. Yeah, that shooting phase and that's combat phase. Yeah, that's good. That's really, really good. That's really nice. Okay, next section of the book is all the stratagems, which in a lot of the codexes recently, that's been where you either make or break an army. Yes, it's, yeah, it's, it's all coming down to stratagems in 40k, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and I've got to say the Games Workshop has absolutely nailed it for the orcs. It's <laughs> like they've looked at every codex and just gone, that'd be really good for orcs. <laughs> that You've got everything in here from mobbing up, which is like the Mob Astra up. Militarum's ability to yeah, combine units. Yeah, combine squads, yeah. You've got your standard ones of being able to take more relics. Mm. Um Psychic or, benefits. Yeah, like, you can change one of your weird boy into a warp head, so he gets yeah. more abilities. Yeah. Um, there's there's all of the ones where like you can fight with a unit that's already fought. Yeah. And um, the ones though that I thought were really either flavorful or strong that people should be aware of is teleporter, <laughs> which basically means two CP and you can select a unit. It has to be 20 power rating or below. So you're not doing this with like... <laughs> you know, the stomper, the stomper across no. the table, just. But you set it up to one side instead of putting it onto the battlefield during yep. deployment. And instead you can basically deep strike it in your movement phase so that you place up anywhere outside of nine inches of enemy models, the yep. standard deep strike. Um, like any ones used in the deployment phase, you can do this multiple times as long as you've got combat points mm. for it. Yeah. And I could see this being strong with units such as Mega Knobs. Yeah. Anything Mega that's not knobs. that fast. No, because you, your your army for orcs is actually quite fast. You've got your running, your charging, you've got all yep. your trucks and your battle wagons and your blah de blah de blah. Yep. But your Mega Knobs, they're slow, they're tanky. So being able to yep. drop them in nine inches away and then maybe get that charge straight away is just going to be horrible. Mm. Exactly. And I guess the thing that you've got in here as well is it says that if you do it with a transport, then the units inside also go <laughs> into reserve. <laughs> but what it does say is it says select a unit with power level 20 or below, and then also you put the units in if it's a transport. So could you put a unit worth more than 20 power level inside a battle wagon and Maybe, then teleport the battle yeah, wagon if in? That, if there even is a unit worth more And that might be the reason. There might not be something you can do that with. Not be any but worth a consideration. Um, the other ones I really liked was more DACA, which basically means your DACA, DACA, DACA ability works on a five and a six rather than just on a six. <laughs> on a big shooter boy unit, that's going to be a lot of extra shots. That's a lot of shots, or even looters. And if you're bad moons, you're then re-rolling ones yeah. on all of those shots. That's great. So it's, it's, great. it's the answer to everything though, isn't it? More DACA. Yep. If something's not dying, shoot it a bit more. There's somewhere like Grot Shields, which basically means that you pick a unit um, that's close to another uh, Gretchen unit, and when it takes the wound, when it actually suffers the wound, you can then instead say, I'm going to move this onto the Gretchen. Yep. It, you do have to roll a two up to get that to work, but I mean, that's fairly, ac that, you know, that's going to happen most of the time. And what I like is it's after you suffered the wound. So if you do that with a unit of, say, Mega Knobs, you first have to fail the tough mega knob save, two up save, two up save yeah. and then you can roll a dice and on the two up go, oh no, that point of damage hit kills a Gretchen instead. Yeah, you're going to be seeing that, aren't you? With yeah. uh, big 10 man mega knob units, just with 10 grots running with, in front of them. With the max them. number of Gretchen yeah, in front of them. Running forward, it's just yeah. 10 obligatory ruins then, isn't it? Exactly. Um, I quite also like loot it, which basically means if any unit gets, if any vehicle gets destroyed within three inches of a orc unit, it could be an enemy vehicle or a friendly vehicle, then you can use this stratagem in order to increase their save by one for the rest of the game, <laughs> as they basically grab all of the scrap metal and have to slap it on themselves. <laughs> Um, if looters use this ability, they actually get to roll a dice, and on a four up, you get that command point back. Oh wow! Okay, which yeah, is that's really just nice. That's what looters do, isn't so, it? So park them next to yeah. any of your gun wagons, and yeah, I think that's great. 
Um, and the other one that I just wanted to mention was the Unstoppable Green Tide, <laughs> which basically says that if a unit of boys is below thirty, uh, sorry, below half strength, then what you can do, and here's three co uh, command points, but you can remove them from the battlefield, put them up on the battlefield edge, mm. as long as they're um, more than nine inches away from their unit, but back at full strength. So you could get that unit down to say a single, a single or two boys. Single boy and then yep. just all his friends come back. Th Thirty boys come back on the side of a table. And that you wouldn't have to pay reinforcements for that, would you? No. Because that's not a new unit. It's no, a regeneration. It's exactly. So I think that that that's is good. really strong. That's really good. Um, some people are wondering what would happen to Ard Boys, which used to be the unit whereby it was Orc yeah. Boys, but they had a four up save. Better Boys, wasn't it? So it's a bit different now in that basically it's a stratagem to upgrade a Boys unit. But one thing to note now is that it only actually brings them up to a five up save, not the four up save. Yeah, you'll see it again, you're seeing things like this with the uh, space rules come to mind when yep. you're. You're reduced to one man and you can spend some command points to make him a lone wolf rather than yep. a lone wolf being a detachment and that one guy gets some benefits. So it kind of makes sense exactly. that they're doing this, aren't they? Yeah. Rather than doing a new data sheet, you just yeah do that. But those are just a few of the generic orc ones that I've covered here. I'd honestly say check them out. Normally you have a look through a list and you'd say there's a few yeah, there's yeah, a few that, strong that, ones that, in there. That, there's well, a few situational ones. Yeah. Everything in here is gold. You've even got stuff like boarding actions, which are so themey, like an orc truck drives up, and rams, an, and rams an enemy vehicle, and suddenly all the guys inside the vehicle don't have to get out, they just get to board the vehicle and attack <laughs> it. it. It's crazy fun, and, this, and they are really strong. Yeah. And the next page basically covers the stratagems, but those which are specific to the particular orc clans. Like, just to give you an example, if you're um, freebooters, you can call in an artillery strike from the kill cruiser. So you can pick three points on the battlefield. There's some restrictions about it. But basically, all of the enemy units within... Um, let's have a look. Within three inches of those points um, can take D3 mortal wounds if you're going to be rolling a five up for them. That's quite good. You can only use it once per battlefield, but it's nice just to see some theme and. Oh, yeah. I think that's pretty strong. <laughs> that is quite good. <laughs> and things like the bad moons, we've always said with the shooting ones, they can pick a unit that's just shot and shoot with them immediately again. <laughs> 30 points shooting twice. Yeah, that's going to go well, good, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about that with the... Um... Oh, what's the freebooter unit? Oh, flash kits. Flash kits. Yeah. Flash kits. And you're using... The, DACA, the more DACA ability. More DACA, DACA, DACA. Rerolling ones all for this, them, yeah. and then you, after you shoot with them all, you just shoot do it again. again. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so that's absolutely crazy. Um, the next page is Powers of the War. These are the psychic abilities of yeah. the Orcs. So I, I'd say on here, that there's that they're all very fluffy, but there's probably two that I think are the stronger of the yeah. two. Um, one of them is Warpath, which basically lets you, casting value of 7, pick a, a friendly orc unit within 18 inches and add one to its attack. It's simple, but... It's so powerful. Oh. Yeah. I mean, me and Jack were talking before the video, and we're saying here... You can get boys up to like 8 attacks each, can't you, or something it's like I don't think it's quite that. It's no, crazy, though. So, so you've got 2 attacks base, chopper. plus 1 for the chopper. You get plus it's 1 for being above 20, 20 models. Plus one, one from Gaskell. Plus one from this. Then yeah. you get like the fighting think, stratagems. You yeah. Uh, Rerolling hit stratagems. Yeah. And War banner adds one to War hits. War banner adding one to hit, so you're hitting on twos. It's just. It's an orc you boys can make, are so powerful. Yeah. You which, can make the humble orc boy incredibly powerful. Which is how they should be. I mean, yeah. orcs are mental, aren't they, in combat? It's they're the just, backbone of the unit. And yeah. It's nice that they're a troop's choice. Yeah. The, the other one that I just cover here from Psychic Powers is to jump. I believe it's the same as in the index, but basically casting value of seven. Pick a friendly or uh, infantry unit within 12 inches, um, take it off the table and deep strike it anywhere on the board more than nine inches away. I think you're going to see this with some of oh, the, yeah. the weird boys basically flinging units of 30 boys up field. Yeah. Yeah. Strong. Okay, uh, the next section we go on to is the Shiny relics equivalent gubbins. for the orcs. Shiny, Shiny gubbins. gubbins. 
Um, you've got a load here which is generic to all of the different orcs, uh, the, all the different clans rather. Ed Whopper's Kill Chopper, that's always yeah. been in if, there, if it? You've, if you've been with orcs for a while, you'll recognise a lot of the names. Dead Shiny Shooter. Although some of the abilities may have slightly changed. Um, so, the, super Cyborg Body, you're not just a Cyborg Body. Quite no. a super Cyborg Body. And I could see that one being quite popular oh, purely okay. because uh, each time you lose a wound, roll a dice and on a 5 up, you don't lose it. And um, reason being is it's very difficult for orcs to get any form of an invuln save. It's yeah. all, apart from um, the custom, custom force field, fields, it's almost it? impossible. Yeah. And that I only affects that. them in the shooting yeah. phase. I love that as well. You can't make Doc's tools rolls for this model just because they're probably... You more, can't stack it with more, a pain boy. More machines than boys at that <laughs> point, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Um, and there's some other ones in here which are just absolutely great. I, I prefer the ones which are specific to the different cultures. Some of them here, like this one is, is so themey that I loved it, which is the the snake bites, which are the ones which they don't Sneaky, like technology. No, no, these are oh, the ones these, that, these, these are ones like, I don't like tech. Yeah, these are the primitive ones, almost the uh, the Age of Sigma uh, orcs. That's it. Yeah, but yeah. this one is called Brog's Buzz Bomb, and basically it's a grenade full of little squig bees. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. It's six inch range, but it's a grenade 3d6, strength 5, AP minus 1, damage 1. And when you get to throw it, you after you resolve those attacks, pick another enemy unit within six inches. And then you also do the same thing, but only 2d6 attacks this time. But I, I just love the fact that you're throwing tiny squig bees. Tiny squigs, yeah. I don't want nades. You want tiny squigs. And, and if you want something that you're thinking, oh, I want something more about strength than fluff... You've got the Gobshot Thunderbus, which is the one for bad moons. We've always said they're the shooting guys. But basically, this one here has got 12 inch range, heavy 2d6, strength 5, minus 1 AP, damage 1, but always hits. Anything on an orc that says always hits is great. That's really good. And if so, you, if that's one, you want to make your yep. war boss more shooty than combat, you just give yep. it that. Which I can just imagine some good cool. versions now. War bosses holding big <laughs> shooter guns, just like. Well, that. put this with the, the combi scorcher, and you yeah. can also fire the scorcher part. So now you're doing 3d6 strength 5 minus 1. That's pretty good. For an orc, and everything hits. For an yeah. orc, that's amazing. That's really good. I pass the relics, and we get on to the warlord traits. Mm. You've got your set of generic ones, and then you've also got one specific one, which is for each of the different yeah. um, clans. You, this generally seems to revolve around your warlord. It not tends to be buffing other people, but more about becoming more of a monster himself. Um, you've got the first one, which is follow me, lads. If you didn't want to take a war boss, but you want all the abilities of having a war boss, so your mechs, and yeah, stuff. your big so mechs or something. Like that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, otherwise, other ones include either adding one to his wounds, adding one to toughness, that sort of thing. But generally, yeah. just making more of a beat stick. More of a boss of your boss. Yeah. Um, in terms of the clan specific ones, and I think this is where people will go to. For example, the bad moons get to give him the four up invuln save. That pretty is that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Really Not paying good. no points. That's, that's just really good. a warlord trait. A four up invuln save yeah. on an orc. That's yeah. incredible. Um. And I really like the freebooters one again. Going to that reroll one hit of reroll ones for attacks made by friendly freebooter units in the fight phase when they're within six inches of the warlord. That's quite good. Again, we talked just... about how the war banner adds one to hits. Yeah. So suddenly, your all of your boys are hitting on twos. Mm. Well, now they're hitting on twos, rerolling ones. Yeah. With yeah. six attacks each yeah. or whatever. It's, it's not bad, is it? It's not bad at all. And for any of the people who wanted to regain uh, command points, the Blood Axes, which are the ones who are the sort of the military regimented unorky orcs. Yeah. Um, they've got the one where every time you spend a command point, and it's for each command point, not just once per stratagem, um, on a six up, you get that command point back. Yeah. Which is a very nice one. Okay, so we've got to the point now where we're talking points. We've already talked a lot about what different units do and things like that mm. um i've had a look compared index back to codex and just wanted to sort of cover off the major things and things that i thought would sort of influence what you would do in, when building an army um as perhaps expected power claws have gone down similar to how power fist did for space marines yeah they've now gone down from 25 to only 13 points that's quite a significant that's reduction a yeah. i think honestly throw a power claw on everyone who can oh, take yeah. it just why not 
Um, big choppers went down from nine till five. So again, if you're if you're being more sparing on the points, that's not a bad. That's almost yeah. your, your power sword equivalent. In terms of units, Gaz Goal's gone up a little bit, but I think that he brings mm. a lot to an army. Yeah, he's he only gone up twenty more. points, which is about ten percent or so. And similar for Mad Doc Grotznik, he's gone up another eight points, which is about ten percent. Yeah, you're seeing more abilities within the army, so it's not. Yeah weird for them to go up is it no war bosses war bosses surprisingly actually went up 10 points whereas i i think sort of considering that they don't have a great save or so i was a bit surprised at but i guess it's the strength of allowing you to to charge after you've already advanced yeah. and perhaps with some of the it's other stuff strong, meant that he was yeah. but that's like a 20 percent increase in points it's quite a lot um but big mechs with shock attack guns have become the new uh the new, the new fire sale item. Oh, yeah. They've they've come down twenty points when you factor in the gun, and it's basically from the gun getting cheaper. Yeah. So they're now only eighty points. So if you want some backfield artillery and you've got some so HQ, good. or you just want to fill some HQ slots, they're not they are not bad oh, by any shape yeah. or form. That's so good. The the one that I'm sure is small change but will affect a lot of lists is the fact that boys have gone up from six to seven points. Mm. which is only one point but when you're taking 30, 60 yeah. of them yeah. 90 of them or whatever um that can add a lot yeah. of points onto it but saying that i think equally what we've seen in terms of stratagems and things mean that they're perhaps so yeah much they're more now a lot more deadly so you're going to be yeah. seeing the points to account for that maybe it's not on the data sheet of the boys that they've gotten better but just with the army as a the whole synergy. the synergies the stratagems the yeah. clans all this it yeah. makes boys so and like we were saying when you're getting boys on six attacks hitting on twos re-rolling ones every hit makes an additional every hit of six makes an additional attack yeah. That's just millions of attacks. And yeah. It's not weird for them to. They, it's for it's still a workhorse unit, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And if you want your cheap um, troops for filling Boss. out, use Gretchen. No. There's, there's still only, I think, three points a model. It's something. Bless them. Yeah. <laughs> a 30 point troops unit in a in a meta where people are trying to fill out um, slots to get a command. Exactly. I mean, I can so see it. HQ, three troops, you just take yeah. like three of them, which is like War Boss. Yeah. Uh, pain boy or mech just yeah. things like that it's, you're going to yeah. rack up those command points very and, quickly. and the Gretchen now with that grot shields strategy no, they're is, actually quite is actually good, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah they'll sit on an objective they'll protect your just expensive just make holding grots out in front of them absorbing yeah. bullets it's... exactly so um, battle wagons got cheaper they've dropped 41 points <laughs> which is which was 25% of their cost that's, <laughs> that's a lot and considering I think we're going to see a lot of units in battle wagons yeah, being chucked battle up the battlefield. Wagons are going to be the main, especially now. Yeah. Like it used to be trucks, isn't it? You used to have yeah. ten. You used to have nine trucks, each filled with ten shooter boys. But now, yeah. with the abilities that the larger the units, the more deadly they are. You're going to be seeing battle wagons full of boys now, yep. charging up there in their make workshops, having their something specials put <laughs> on them. So they can just, charge into yeah. the enemy, definitely. And saying saying trucks, trucks have gone down as well. No. They're only fifty nine points now, so they've gone They're down bad. seventeen points. Yeah. Again, that that's a crazy big discount. Yeah. And I think because people realise like trucks were a means to an ends. Yes. They're yeah. not stellar units themselves. Yeah, they're not. But they you're get, not going to keep them there, no. but the truck's going to get them there, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. In terms of some of the the bigger units. I guess what we've got here is the, the Morkonaut and the Gorkonaut have both dropped about 45, 50 points, which is quite a lot. They're, I That's think a it's a new points. kit, but you didn't perhaps see them so much because people no. felt they were quite expensive. Mm. But now they're both down to sort of the 250, 220 which range. Which for a heavy but, walker is what, what yeah. you're going to be seeing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And you'll need to add the guns on top of that, so that won't be the final points cost. Yeah. But just, just having a 50 point reduction in their base cost and I've not seen any significant increases in the weapons costs, means that you should be seeing more of those on the battlefield, which can only be a good thing, because yeah. they're just like Russian dolls for stompers. <laughs> they're great. But the other things to note is that killer cans, whilst the base unit hasn't got really any smaller, their um, saws that you take with them have gone down. They've halved in price, basically. So you're saving sort of 15 points per killer can. I mean, if you, yeah, so I think you're going to see more cans on the battlefield. And similarly for Death Dreads, the Death Dread base has gone down 20 points. It's now only 55. And their claws have gone down half in price. So I think you're going to be seeing a lot of Death Dreads as well. Yeah, which I, I quite like the yeah. Death Dreads. I think they look cool. 
I think generally all of the knobs have gone down about 20% as well. If if you were playing orcs in the index, you're going to <laughs> you love, love playing orcs, orcs in the, in the codex. codex. <laughs> everything's got cheaper, everything's got better. Um, honestly, I can't find a complaint with this codex at all. I'm so happy with it. I said, it's like they've looked at every other codex and then in true orc style, they've actually <laughs> looted them. <laughs>